please stand and join us as we start our time with a song. competent and way more than than, uh, than than we need to do it, I bet they'd welcome help too, okay? And it's uh, one to three, right, in this space next Saturday, Cupcake Wars. Uh, but we're here to, this morning to worship, and he is uh, worthy of all of our worship. And uh, so uh, just listen to these words uh, from the psalmist, Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Father in heaven, we ask now that you would inhabit the praises of your people as we sing your praises, as we lean into your presence with our prayers, as we open hearts and ears and minds to respond to your word, and as we are drawn heavenward by the work of your spirit in this space, we sing your praises now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
Father, you are the author of life. You're the giver of love. We loved you because you loved us first. So much of you sent your one and only son, Jesus, to die for us so we can be with you forever, for those who believe. Heavenly Father, speak to us now from your word, embolden your servant Jacob, that you may, you may discern the words you have for us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a seat if you would, please. And uh, Bible Explorers, you can uh, relocate your excited restlessness. And because I mentioned the other, uh, the other week, it's, uh, it's so sad they don't want to go to their Bible program. That's good. That's good. You join me in prayer. Our Father and our God, we uh, just honor you this morning. You're the creator of all things, so perfect and magnificent and wonderful God. And Lord, we think of your word brought to us by the ministry of your spirit and your servant David. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield, in Him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to Him. The Lord is the strength of His people. He is the saving refuge of His anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Fathers, we come before you, we acknowledge that you are our shepherd. And you are the perfect shepherd. And we are, as sheep, Lord, we've all gone astray. Sheep are, well, they're not very bright. They need constant care. They need defense. They need protection. They need provision. They need guidance. And as our perfect shepherd, Lord, we, your sheep, are so blessed. We thank you for the blessings, the abundance of your presence in our lives. We thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. We thank you, oh, so much this morning for the blood of Jesus shed for us that we might be forgiven of our sins, set free from the captivity of sin and of death, and given the incredible gift of not just a pardon, but abundant and everlasting life. What a wonderful God you are. We honor you, we praise you, and we thank you. And Lord, this morning we, we just rest in your abundance and give you thanks for all the blessings of this life and of the life to come. And Lord, we also thank you so much for being a God who heals, a God who delivers, a God who saves, a God who restores, a God who binds up the brokenhearted. And so Lord, for all those among us that would mourn, we ask for comfort, that our captives, we would ask for freedom, that are distant from you, that we would ask for your wonderful calling on their lives and by your spirit, that they might receive the good news of Jesus and be right with you. We pray, Father, for those among us who are ill or so grateful you are God who heals. We pray for, for healing for those that are sick. We pray, Lord, for peace for those pray, Lord, for joy for those that are downcast, and for anyone who feels despair or hopelessness, Lord, we pray that you'd flood their hearts with hope. And Lord, we thank you so much that you love us so. May we be a reflection of your love poured into our hearts by your Holy Spirit, Lord. We might take that incredible capability we have to love as Jesus and to love you that way to love one another that way, and to love the broken world around us the way Jesus did when he left his throne in heaven and humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. What a great God you are. Father, we have personal burdens. We take just a quiet moment to bring those before you. Would you hear our unspoken prayers, Father? Father, might you be pleased as we come together and join our voices to pray the way Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, um, I'm not going to be preaching this morning. Um, I started the week feeling lousy, felt better on Wednesday, and then Wednesday night, because somebody else here tested positive for COVID, discovered that I was positive for COVID. Don't worry, I followed the CDC guidelines. I've been out of COVID jail for, well, since Friday night, okay? So I think I'm safe, but I, I've washed this microphone. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so it, it is a privilege because I didn't know if I, how quickly I would recover. It's a, a privilege that we've been blessed with um, not one but two young people who grew up in our church that are going to be able to share with us this, this morning. Um, the, the first is, uh, is, uh, is uh, Jennifer uh, Brown McCormick, okay? Um, Jenny to some, Jen to most these days. And uh, she, she grew up here in this church, and uh, several years ago, um, uh, she was uh, in, in, in the worship ministry here and so forth, and she accepted the challenge uh, to uh, lead sports camp. She was our sports camp director. Uh, I'm thinking about, uh, I don't know, remind me, was it the year we popped out of COVID? Yeah, yeah, so 2021, she was our sports camp director, and, uh, and uh, she's, she's now serving with that ministry, Uncharted Waters, that bring the young people that uh, do our sports camp, and we're excited to have sports camp this year, but right now I'm really excited to introduce her to you, as uh, she's up visiting now from where she and her husband James live in Tennessee. So, welcome, good morning. Thank you, good morning everyone. It's so good to be home again. Um, so I am Jen McCormick. I am a full-time missionary with UW Sports Ministry. Our ministry partners with churches around the country to run sports camps every summer. Um, and our vision is to equip and empower churches to use sports as a, um, as a tool to share the gospel with people who might not choose to walk through the door on a Sunday morning, who might drive by the school or the church and say, that's, I don't, I can't go in those doors. That's not a place for me, um, but it's a place that they're willing to send their kids to a sports camp. Um, so our hope is to help churches to create that common ground for kids and families to be a part of a church community. And most importantly, to let um, the churches connect with those families. We're here for a week, our teams come in and we help run your sports camp, but really our connection, we're with a connection, we want that to be with the church, not necessarily with us. Um, so last year we had 35 camps in 17 states. We had over 2,500 campers and we had 465 first time decisions for Jesus. So it was a really exciting year for us. Um, it was maybe a little bit smaller in numbers than last year, but where we went was more widespread and we had a ton of new churches last year. Um, so that was exciting. So at the beginning of each summer, we train college age coaches in a themed sports and Bible curriculum. And we send those coaches and teams across the US to run week long sports camps. We have soccer, we have basketball, we have cheerleading and team 45, which is my personal favorite because we get to do all of the sports. Um, so they don't have to pick one, they can do every single one. Our theme for this year, every year has a theme, and this year's theme is undefeated. It's based on Romans 8, 37 through 39, which says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I haven't memorized it yet, and it is the memory verse, so I have to work on that. Um, so we take these verses and we build our sports curriculum, our Bible curriculum, and our songs around them. Um, and each day of camp will focus on a different thing that could defeat us. So height and depth, powers, death, and life. But we'll teach our kids and we'll see ourselves how the victory is ours through Christ. So we're super excited for what God's doing in and through our ministry. Um, most of our camp weeks are actually filled already. Um, so we have, I think, two open weeks and we have at least eight new churches coming in um, for camps this year. So it's really exciting to see how they found us, if it's people coming back from different churches, um, but we're really excited. 
So I had the opportunity last year to travel for five weeks with one of our teams um, to churches all over the country, and it was really exciting and encouraging to see um, what God's doing all over the country in kind of the global and U.S. church. Um, so in San Diego, we were at the Chinese Bible Church of San Diego, and on Monday nights they have a service, like a full-blown church service, at 10 o'clock at night for restaurant workers, because that's the only time that they can get there. And it's not something that I would have seen the need for, but they saw that in their community, and so they're filling that need. Um, so it was just fun to see how church is, how God's moving, and not just in our little quiet corner of Connecticut or in eastern Tennessee. Um, it's also been fun to go back and talk to these churches as we prepare for 2024. I know who's on the other end of the phone now. I can see their faces. We've served together. We've walked together. We've um, played with the kids in their community together. And I think as I went out, um, I've definitely left a little piece of my heart in Kansas and Texas and North Carolina and San Diego and Arizona. Um, and it's, sometimes it's hard to put words to. I would also love to share that this is something that you guys can be a part of. Um, your camp is July 22nd through the 26th. Just because it's a sports camp doesn't mean you can't be a part of it. You don't have to be a UConn basketball D1 athlete to do this. I am I'm not that. Um, and God still found a way to take my heart and help me serve his people and to uh, work in my life. Um, we're not looking for you to come and work full time with us, but if you want to, you're welcome. Um, but there's a place for everyone at sports camp to serve there, and God's going to take a servant's heart and use that for his community and for his people um, and to work in your life as well. So mark your calendars. Talk to your camp director and Pastor Mike. There is truly a place for everyone to serve at sports camp. Um, another way that you can be a part of what God is doing is by partnering through us with your partnering with us through UW. The summer is definitely our busiest time. Camps are clearly our goal of the summer, but we're working year round um, to make camps happen. We start in August planning for the following year. Um, and our missionaries are fully support based, which means that we raise our own salary and we raise our own support. Um, I am currently about 50% funded, and I'd love to share more and talk with you more about how you can partner with us and be a part of what God's doing um, in our ministry. Um, but when you partner with us, you have the opportunity to reach people who might not walk through the doors on a Sunday morning, who might send their kids to a sports camp, um, and to be a part of what God's doing and share his love um, for them through that common ground of sports. I'll be around after the service, um, but I'd love to chat with you more. So thank you. Before she sits down, I'd like to uh, pray for her and for the ministry. Uh, Father, you are just an amazing God. And Lord, we have such an abundance of testimony here to how this camp touches families and touches kids and, and how Jesus is proclaimed and there's new life. And Lord, I thank you so much for raising up uh, uh, Jen. I thank you for your calling on her life and on James. And, and Lord, I would just ask that you would uh, bless and keep them. I pray, Father, for every provision for UW Sports Ministries. I pray, Lord, for all of these camps all across the country that um, you would uh, grant to them the blessings that we have seen here, uh, right, right here at the Eastford School uh, for, I think, maybe five camps so far, Lord, and we just see all these kids, and, and we've seen so many decisions for Jesus. And so I pray, Lord, that your hand would be upon the ministry, that you give them everything they need, uh, the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, uh, pure hearts, clean hands, and above all, uh, just an abundance of your love and uh, an affection for your children whom you are calling to yourself. So bless Jen, bless the ministry, and Lord, I also ask for your hand on our sports camp as we uh, even now are uh, getting started on our planning and recruitment. Uh, we ask, Lord, that uh, we would see again the beauty of a harvest here this summer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. And by the way, it, 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 I've been here a while now. This is my 20th year. It, it like so warms my heart to see kids that were in this church uh, be serving him. And uh, and so, uh, thank you. It, it's such a blessing I have here today. Uh, and, and it's also a blessing uh, to think of uh, uh, think about kids' ministries and the impact they have. Uh, there was a, there was this family up in Kenyonville, and uh, there were a couple of twin boys there, and uh, they accepted an invitation from uh, a kid who was part of our church family, 
right? I think it was Sean Sabad invited those guys to come check out our kids club program. Uh, and um, gosh, that was like probably third grade. Yeah, you're eight, okay? And um, and uh, and uh, the, the fellow with us this morning, uh, Jacob, uh, he, uh, he he connected here with his brother and uh, new life in Jesus. Uh, and then as he uh, moved into his teen years, uh, spent a whole bunch of time serving the Lord. You know, that's a that's a really important thing with young people. Is uh, you know, Jen served in the worship ministry here. Uh, Jacob served uh, like up at Camp Manadnock. Uh, doing volunteer stuff at a Christian camp up there, that young people who serve the Lord like during their teen years are the ones that, if you follow them, that are most likely uh, to have a serious engagement with the body of Christ when they get a little bit older. Uh, of course, he uh, popped out of Ellis Tech, went in the Air Force, came back, um, and uh, while he was, uh, I think, maybe a senior at Ellis Tech, um, he uh, preached in the pulpit up there. And, uh, and, and we saw that just a propensity for handling the Word of God. And so, um, as I was going on vacation, and uh, of course Jacob's been back with us singing in the praise band, I uh, asked Jacob if he would fill the pulpit on the day um, it snowed and you guys like chickened out and canceled church. And uh, so when I turned on, I had COVID, I thought, I know who I can ask. So that's a long introduction, but uh, Jacob, why don't you come up and shave and share the Word of God with us this morning. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, yeah, so I, I grew up here, uh, started coming when I was eight, like Pastor said. Uh, I got baptized by Pastor up at Crystal Pond. I always spent a lot of time in that, and I got to Haiti a couple times. And then, like you said, I left, but uh, we'll get into that later. This morning we're gonna be in Ephesians. Uh, the book was written by Paul as a letter to the church at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. So, full disclosure, I'm a bit of a history nerd. As part of the prep for the sermon, I found out a lot of interesting stuff on the city of Ephesus itself. It's believed to be one of the earliest Greek settlements along the Aegean Sea. It was believed by the locals to be the birthplace of the goddess, of, the goddess Artemis. Uh, most Greeks believed Artemis and Apollo and her brother were born on the Isle of Delos. In about 129 BC, the Romans began their occupation of the region. And Ephesus became a Roman city. It was Roman when the, the famous temple of Artemis of Ephesus was destroyed by the Goths along with most of the city in around 260s AD. Uh, that temple is talked about in the 19th chapter of Acts. When the Roman Empire split into the East and West Roman Empires, also known as the Roman and Byzantine Empires, Ephesus being 5,000 miles from Rome, but only 340 miles from Constantinople, naturally became part of the Byzantine Empire. Uh, it switched political hands a few times, the Islamic Caliphate, the Byzantine Empire, and then finally became part of the Ottoman Empire. There was a crusade fought there. Uh, about 1425, it finally stopped changing political hands and became Ottoman. And then uh, within 100 years of it becoming Ottoman, the city was abandoned. And it was never built over. There is no city or town or anything built where Ephesus was. So the ruins are on the surface. It's, it's in Turkey near a town called Selçuk. The city of Ephesus is also the home to the burial place of the Apostle John. And it is believed to be the home of Mother Mary in her later years. So this letter was estimated to have been written around 62 AD. At that time, Paul was a captive in Rome, which is mentioned a couple times in the book of Ephesians. In chapter four, he says, I am an ambassador in chains, kind of on the nose. Um, so with the history lesson out of the way, I'd invite you to turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter three, uh, verse 14, it'll also be up there. And stand as we open the word. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, 
may have the strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Would you pray with me? Lord God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word, and I pray that you would give me a spirit of calm as I bring the message. I pray that the words that I speak would be yours, and I pray that you would be at work in this church today. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So, jumping right in there, it says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. <coughs> Not an easy verse to understand. Named. For whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. Kind of sounds like Paul saying, God named us. Basically saying, I'm Jacob because God said so. I mean, yeah, but that's not, that's not the point he's making. To be named is to, identify, it's to define one's identity. As it says, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We're named, we're identified by many things. I personally, I'm a machinist, I'm a student, I'm a Christian. I'm a creation of the Almighty. And that's the point Paul's making. It's a nod, it's a statement of deference to the Creator. The opening two verses of the passage, it's just, a, it's just praise to God. In clearer words, it says, I bow to the Lord, the Creator of all things. When we open a prayer, we start with, with a praise, usually. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We just said that a couple minutes ago. The passage that I, the translation that I have, the passage is titled A Prayer for Spiritual Strength. And that's all that's happening in those first few verses. Paul's opening the prayer. Saying, I bow before you, Father, Creator. In verse 16, it says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. So there's a pretty important word in that verse. Anybody catch it? Let's look again. That according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you. Paul's not praying for himself. He isn't asking for the Lord to give him strength in his own life. He's in chains in Rome right now. He's not praying for himself. He's praying on behalf of the reader. He's saying, Lord, give the people reading this strength. Give the people in Ephesus strength. Give the people sitting in a school gym 2,000 years from now strength. According to the riches of his glory. That's a fancy word we use a lot, glory. We sing songs with that word in it. We sing a song with that title. What's that word mean? From Oxford, Oxford Dictionary, glory is defined as high renown or honor won by notable achievements. God's got a couple of those. Only, only like one or two. Let's see. Well, he created, what was it? Everything? I think, I think that's right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. That's the opening two verses of the Bible. Two sentences of the Bible. God created. That's kind of notable. What else? They gave life. That's not important. What else? Well, he sent his son to die, to save us, to bear our sins and cleanse us of the mess we made. That's pretty notable. So, back to the verse. According to the riches of his glory, I think it's safe to say the riches of his glory are endless. If God opened up the banking app on his handy dandy smartphone, the balance would say, yeah, you're good. His glory is limitless. So according to the riches of, the endless riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. That he, the Lord, may grant you, us, to be strengthened by power, by the power of his spirit in your inner being. Inner being, one's soul, one's heart, So he's saying, may your hearts be strengthened by his spirit. 
kind of sounds like he's asking for the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts. What's that next verse say? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Weird. It's pretty much the same thing. So he's asking that uh, the Spirit be with us and the Son be with us. That's a pretty good ask. Pretty common one. That's a pretty good ask. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. We know that we need to have faith, right? Faith in Christ. Faith is important. It's said countless times in the Bible. Earlier in the book of Ephesians, it says, For by grace we have been saved through faith, not of your own doing, but a gift of God. In Galatians, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. With faith, we're saved. With faith in Christ and the Holy Spirit. With faith, Christ and the Holy Spirit are with us. They're there right now in this gym. It doesn't matter where you are when you worship. Whether you're in a school, whether you're in a beautiful church building that stood for almost 200 years and then burned down, whether you're in the back room of a store, it doesn't matter. Faith isn't dependent on the location. Faith in itself is the important part. Faith and trust that the Lord's gonna handle on things. It gives us peace of mind. It takes away our fears about tomorrow. It's one of those fruits of the spirit the pastor mentioned last week. Faithfulness. That should tell you about anything else that is kind of important. Here's another one of those fruits. Love. That's the first one. That one comes up in the next verse. That you being rooted and grounded in love. John 13, 34, Jesus says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Love is a byproduct of faith. Love is a natural outcome of giving your life to the Lord. It says that we are rooted and grounded in love. It doesn't say that you need to be. It says that you being rooted and grounded in love. His love is the foundation of our born against selves. Being a Christian means we have the love of Christ in us. It's the rock on which we stand and live as Christians. So if Christ is dwelling in our hearts, as Paul prayed earlier, so does his love, and it shows through. John 13, 35, it says, By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This passage in Ephesians, being rooted and grounded in love, that means that love needs to be the most basic thing in our daily lives. In 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 3, it says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Pretty much says it all. It says that we need love. Without it, we might, might as well just be noise. You can have all the faith in the world, but without love, it says, I am nothing. So far in this passage, Paul has prayed for us to be faithful and loving. And through those things, to have the Spirit and the Son dwelling among us. And that the glory of the Father might give us the strength to have those things. Next comes why he's praying for those things. Starting in verse 17, it says that you, being rooted and grounded in love, 
may have the strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. That's a pretty powerful verse. I may or may not have that verse tattooed on my chest. <laughs> break that down. It says, so now that we have the, we have Christ and the Spirit living among us through faith, then rooted and grounded in love, it says, may you have the strength to comprehend with all the saints. In the opening verse of this letter, Paul writes, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. The saints, both here, chapter 3 and chapter 4, chapter 1 of Ephesians, it's, it's just referring to the people of the church. The pastor mentioned that last week. Saints was the term of the day for the faithful, for the, the people of the church. The devoted believers and followers of the Messiah. So Paul wants the reader to understand, along with all the saints, which is to say, the church, the love of Christ. But it, it's more than that. It says, may you have the strength to comprehend not may you comprehend, may you have the strength to comprehend. It says, what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. In Psalm 103, it says, so far as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love. Here's the big thing in that verse. The love of Christ is huge. It's massive. It's bigger than we'll ever know. It's never ending. It's unconditional and it's eternal. And it says to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. That reads kind of like an oxymoron. One bright morning in the middle of the night, I see, said the blind man, know the love that surpasses knowledge. Doesn't make any sense. So Pastor mentioned I was supposed to preach in January. This was the sermon I was going to preach. I realized at the worship team planning meeting for the month of January, when we were trying to pick the music for the, the closer after the sermon today, that that's not what it means. He isn't, Paul isn't saying that we can understand the knowledge that surpasses knowledge. That's ambiguous. It's unclear. Why is he asking us to be able to understand that which we can't understand? He's saying that we may know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. I know what you're thinking. I said the same word. What's that supposed to mean? Know as an experience. He doesn't want us to understand that which humanity can't. He wants us to experience the love of Christ like he has. We've been talking about Paul in the past couple of weeks. Saul of Tarsus. Yeah, you got a big help and a love. So yesterday, the pastor and I sat down to talk about the sermon. And uh, when we got to this part, he said, Do you have a personal example of that? I said, yeah, I could talk about this. And he said, that's what I was thinking. So, like he said, and like I said earlier, I grew up in the church. I went to Sunday school, I went to youth group, I went to snow camp. I volunteered at Manhattan Knock for like six years. I started volunteering up there when I was 14. And uh, pretty much every winter after that, you can ask my grandpa, I spent pretty much the whole winter in, in New Hampshire, every weekend, especially once I got my driver's license. I went to Haiti on missions trips, led by a guy sitting here, John Eklund, a couple times. And then at 17, I enlisted in the Air Force, and I left before I even turned 18. I turned 18 six weeks in the basic training. There was about a year when I was gone that I was still involved in the church. I sang in a worship team in the chapel on the base I was at up in Alaska. My heart wasn't in it. Slowly, I 
found myself adrift and wandering. The only time I would pray was when I was in church, and the only time I was in church was when I was home visiting, which was uh, about once a year. And before I knew it, I, I wasn't in the fold. I could feel it, but I didn't care. And then I got out of the military in September of 2021. I moved back home. I went to church once. As soon as I got home, it was for the, the picnic uh, church, the church picnic that summer. And then for like six months, I didn't go. I lived two miles from here. I didn't go. <coughs> Grandpa went every week. Finally, I went to volunteer up at Manadnock due to a very good friend of mine, a guy named Alan. Uh, he's the one who got me involved with volunteering at the camp in the first place and convinced me to go to Haiti. Yeah. So I went up to camp, and then I, I decided, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to church. I was a little apprehensive to come back. I was a little scared because I didn't know what the reaction to me coming back would be. Because people didn't know I've been in Connecticut for like six months at this point. I've been back. But I wasn't around in church. And one night, it was a Saturday night, when I asked Grandpa what time church was, he told me, and he asked if I was thinking about going. And I said, yeah. And he responded with, I was letting you come back in your own time. The next morning, I came to church. And I was welcomed back with open arms. No one cared that I'd been away. Just that I made it back. And I wasn't expecting that and I wasn't ready for that. I was treated like, like in the parable of the prodigal, prodigal son. Nobody cared where I'd been, what I'd been doing. Just that I was alive and that I was back. That's what Paul's talking about. That's the love he wants us to experience. Doesn't matter where you go, how far you think you've fallen, you keep walking further and further away. Once you turn around, you realize that God was one step behind you the whole time. You only thought you were getting further away. Because the whole time you've been walking away, God's dogging your footsteps. And in your mind, you're miles away from God. You turn around, he's right there. That's the love that Paul's talking about that he wants us to experience.
does not exist. We can't explain God, why God is, what God is. We simply know that God is the Almighty. He is the Creator. He is the Lord of the heavens and of the earth. We don't know why. We don't need to know why. Because we have faith. We know we're loved. We can feel it every single day. We don't know how. We don't know the sheer volume of his love. We know it's there. And it says that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. To say it plainly, that you may be made complete with the power and the love and the glory of God. God is great. This prayer of Paul's is that we may have faith and love and that we may know the vastness of the love of Christ and to know that we will never truly understand it. That's okay. And that we may be made complete by the Father as only the Father can do. Would you pray with me? Lord God, I, I thank you for your love. I pray that uh, Everybody in here would, would feel that and know without a doubt that there is nothing you wouldn't do for us. I pray that in our daily lives we would feel your love and that we would show your love to those around us. Thank you, Lord. song today, let these words really sink in.
him. And now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we may ask or think, according to the power at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. We'll see you next week.